let us just take a look at the Parafac algorithm. I'm going to use the amino acid data again. And let's build a Parafac model using three components. And what you will see is that the algorithm is iterating now. It tells us that it will stop if the relative change in fit is less than 10 to the minus 6. It also tells us that it is using some approximation sorry, as initialization. So it is setting A, B and C using this approach. And after 25 iterations, it stopped because the relative change got smaller than 10 to the minus 6. And it stopped with a sum of squared residuals of 1.5 million. And it says that it was terminated based on relative change in fit. So that means we converged to a solution. Now let me just redo this again and save the model. Like that. And what I want to do now is that I want to extract let me just close this one. I want to extract this number here. This is what we try to minimize. And we can actually find that inside the model. Inside the model we have a lot of different types of information saved. The name of the model, the name of the computer, date, etc. We have something called the loads. This is A, B and C. We have some diagnostic things, but we also have one field called detail. And let me go into that one. Detail. So let me rewrite model dot detail like this. Now inside here there's even more information. I'm not going to go through all of this. But there's one called SSQ. This is information about the fit. So I'm going to take that one. And here we actually have the residual variation, the sum squared residuals. So if I use the arrow up, I get this one. Hmm. This is the actual fit of my model, or the lack of fit, you can say, the sum squared residuals. Let me call them E1. E1. Okay. Now let me redo the model one more time. Like that. And let me say E2. So let me look at E1 and E2. Let me get more digits like that. You see that these two models are pretty much the same down to the eighth digit or something like that in terms of fit. So they are very, very much the same. Well, that's not so surprising because we actually started from the same starting point. So let's try and change the initialization, sorry, so that we're not using this initialization, but let's use some random numbers, for example. Well, how do we do that? Let me look at the help of Parafac. Every function in PLS toolbox can be changed by options. I can give options as an input and thereby I can change my model. And if I go back to MATLAB, for every model I can get 
the default options by typing the name and then options like here. If I do that, I can see that there are a number of features that I can change uh, for the Parafag algorithm. One of them is stop criteria. So when the algorithm stop. And another one is called init. And that's actually the one that we want to look into. Well, let me go back here and scroll down to the options. And here we see that init defines how the parameters are initialized. And we can find more information here. OK. So if I set this number to 2, I will start by random values. Actually, we usually prefer this one, where we orthogonalize these random values, because then they point in different directions. And that's quite helpful, even though they're still uh, random numbers. So let me try and do that. So what I have to do is that I just have to change this number to 3. And I have to change my model so that it sees the options like this. And hopefully, yeah, we see here that it starts from random values instead of starting from the other initialization it had before. It seems like it's struggling a little bit more, uh, but hopefully we will find a solution. Let's see. We're getting closer now. Now, the model looks very similar. And if I, extract the sum squared residuals. We can see that it's very much the same, much the same down to the six digit uh, or something like that. Um, so again, we find the same solution. And in fact, we will see that we do that no matter how many times we repeat this, because this is a very simple problem. But if two of the spectra, for example, were very similar, or if two of the concentrations were very similar, or one of the signals was very low, well, then that could be a difficult problem. And we might run into problem with the algorithm not converging to the same solution every time. One other situation where that would happen is usually if we take too many components. If we take too many components, let me fit a Parafact model. Let's say I fit eight components. I can easily fit more components than the number of samples. Well, if I do that, you will often find that the algorithm, first of all, is going to take a long time to converge. And it's also very often going to have problems with not converging to the same solution every time. Parafag really has problems estimating models when uh, the data um, is not very low rank trilinear. So if we take too many components, we will almost always run into uh, problems with converging. Well, more can be said about assessing models. But the main point is that you should refit models before you say that you have a solution. And you should make sure that you have a well-defined solution, meaning that it converges to the same sum of squared residuals uh, every time. And if you don't uh, converge to the same solution every time, try to change the model either by changing the algorithm, make it more strict, repeat it more times, or maybe change it completely if you have, for example, a two-factor degeneracy. <laughs>